That is the sound of high school students prepping a play with only a week before curtain. By the looks of the number of unfinished backdrops and unsewn costumes, they are obviously way behind. That's probably why they are working all day during spring break. So much for the break. You can smell the stress in the air. And it doesn't smell pretty. A student walks by quickly, talking with her friend. Can you believe the tipster leaked the mascot results already? How does he get his information? The student walks by Mr. Newman, who sits with a laptop in his lap across from Miss Kelly, who you remember as the drama teacher and director of this production. Miss Kelly holds a printed copy of the script in her lap. I'm not saying it's not good. We just don't have the time. This rewrite requires a whole new dance sequence, and who's going to choreograph that in a week? Look, it's your play. If you want to keep it subpar, leave it as is. Don't give me that again! That's the line that's gotten us into this mess! In another corner, Michi and Scott argue. Did you say it or not? Because I know Ashley can exaggerate things, but you've also been a real jerk lately. If I tell you I didn't say it, can I go rehearse? So you said it then. Great. You know, I have enough pressure knowing that I have so much competition in the industry, I really need a boyfriend who Scott can... rolls his I eyes. Nearby, Jesse helps Lindsay run her lines. They have scripts in their hands. Jesse recites the lines without looking at his script. Please don't kill me. I'll leave right now. Lindsay tries not to look at her script, but does. Pathetic zombie. All of you are the same. You're all the same. Uh, right, right. You're, you're all the same. You're all the same. You're all the same. Keep working at it, Lindsay. You'll get it. In another corner, Paul spray paints a set piece while watching Lindsay and Jesse. Harker walks by carrying fabric. The hipster follows Paul's line of sight and sees that the hoodie-clad thug is obviously watching Lindsay. You'll never catch a fish if your line's not in the water. Paul startles. He gets all defensive, trying to hide his embarrassment. What do you know? You're like dudes. Exactly. I know what someone wants in a man. Harker wiggles his eyebrows in his Harker sort of way and continues on. Paul considers. He grabs an empty paint tray and heads toward the supply closet, being careful to walk by Lindsay on the way. You're all the same. You're, you're all the same. You're all the same. Um, try singing the lines. Lindsay looks up, surprised. What? Singing the lines can help you memorize them. I read it on the internet. Lindsay smiles sincerely. Thanks, I'll give that a try. Paul stands there a moment, not sure what to say next. But before Paul can figure it out, Lincoln enters. Hey Lincoln, did you see the leaked mascot results? Paul walks away, defeated. Yeah, crazy, huh? But, uh, I actually came to say goodbye. What? Yeah... Lincoln looks uncomfortably toward where Harker sews costumes. He moves closer to Lindsay and talks more quietly. Turns out Harker has some special accommodation that says he can't be subjected to anything at school which triggers psychological trauma. Lindsay eyes Harker with disgust. Which, as it turns out, includes me. Lindsay turns back to Lincoln. But he can't force you to leave. You have the right to be here too. This is paradise. Everyone's welcome. Jesse watches with concern. Not according to Harker's psychologist. So, goodbye. You guys are awesome. Lincoln turns to leave. You're not gonna fight it? Well, what's the point? Him feeling the way he does? Do I really want to stay here? You guys rock it up here, alright? You got the best mascot in the world. Lincoln exits. Lindsay watches him leave, and then glares at Harker, who wears a self-satisfied smile. East Hollywood High School presents Paradise High, Episode 14, My Role in Paradise. That's Lindsay exiting the front doors of the school and walking fast. 
because she's angry. That's Paul exiting the school behind Lindsay. Paul also walks quickly, not because he's angry, but because he wants to catch up with Lindsay. As he approaches her, he slows down to match her pace. Hey. Hey. You okay? Yeah, just people make me mad. I'll be alright. Cool. Anyway. I've been meaning to give this to you. I found it. Paul hands Lindsay the bracelet she lost in episode 9. You know, when she broke into his house. It's the one that says L and C on it. Thanks. I thought it was gone. Lindsay slips the bracelet into her pocket. Paul notices that she doesn't put it on. No problem. You have any plans for the rest of the day? Why do you ask? I just thought you might like to hang. Well, actually, I have community service. I think it could help with that. Fair warning, this is not the kind of service you think it is. Daycare. Kids run everywhere. Chaos. Lindsay sits at a table with kids who are drawing pictures. She yells to Paul, who chases after a fast girl. Make her sit in the timeout chair! But don't physically force her, we can get in really big trouble. Paul has caught the fast girl and holds her tight by the arm. Then how am I supposed to get her in the chair? I'll do it. Switch me spots. Lindsay gets up from the table and moves quickly to where Paul is. She gets very close to the fast girl and talks quietly, so no one will hear what she says. All right, Bailey, do you want me to tell Tanner that you like him? Fast girl's crush stands against a wall, trying to get a matchbox car unlodged from his nostril. The fast girl looks from her crush back to Lindsay. She goes and sits in the timeout chair. Paul is impressed. He goes and sits with the drawing kids. Paul looks at the pictures they are drawing. Suns and stick people and unicorns and dinosaurs. You know, typical kid stuff. Paul grabs a crayon and paper. All right, kids. It's time you learn to tag. The day in daycare was grand. There were songs and card games and hide and go seek and tag. The game and the art style, it was just great. Paul and Lindsay had a great time together. Afterward, Paul and Lindsay walk down the street. He shows her a picture of a tag obviously drawn in crayon by a child. You did pretty good, huh? I'm impressed. You're a good teacher. Damn right I am. Paul folds up the picture and puts it in his pocket. You want to learn to tag? I don't know. I'm no good at that. You're with the master teacher. Come on. Paul moves quickly to a nearby alley. He looks around to make sure no one is watching. He motions for Lindsay to go ahead of him. Come on, quick. Lindsay follows him reticently. No, I, I really shouldn't. You'll do great. Paul pulls a spray can from his hoodie. Look, it's all on the wrist. You have to. Paul sees the look in Lindsay's face. She really doesn't want to do this. Oh. Sorry. Thanks. I really appreciate it, and I think your work is beautiful. It's just, you know. Paul puts his spray can back in his hoodie. It's cool. But we should totally hang out again. I mean, maybe you can show me how to tag with crayons. So did you hear about the mascot? That evening, Lindsay's bedroom. We have to be ruthless, or you decaying, decomposing. Lindsay holds her script to her chest while pacing the room, trying to recite her lines. Lindsay's stuck. She turns to Jesse, who sits in a chair. Rotting. And you're not supposed to sing this part. Lindsay smiles. It's a trick. It's supposed to help with memorization. Suddenly, Lindsay notices the clock. 8.03. Oh no! It's, it's past 8. Aren't you supposed to go home? Yeah. Lindsay gives Jesse a questioning smile. Mom made Dad go out with her tonight. She won't know. Lindsay's smile turns devilish. Turning into quite the rebel, Jesse. Yeah. Lindsay sits on the bed. Speaking of dates... I think I went on a date with Paul today. 
Jesse's stance gets all awkward. Uh, oh, what did you do? Community service at the daycare. Was it a good thing? Yes, it was. He was surprisingly sweet. Jesse is pretty hurt. They sit there in awkward silence. Lindsay suddenly stands and readies her script. Where were we again? At Rotting Meatbag. Right. We have to be ruthless or you... Meanwhile... Or you rotting meatbags will exterminate us! Michi is also reciting lines, moving around her room and making large hand gestures. Michi looks to Scott, waiting for him to say the next line. He has a copy of the script in his lap, but he ignores it, texting. Or you rotting meatbags will exterminate us! Sorry, uh, hey, guess what? The mascot result was leaked. I don't care if the President of the United States was leaked. Focus, Scott! Scott puts his phone away and raises his script. Okay, where are we? You know, I think it's admirable that you want to be ready, but you know all the lines. It's not enough to just know them. I'm the understudy for the lead role. I have to be them. In the two years you've been lead, did your understudy ever step in? Michi answers with a disapproving look. See, you're not the lead, Michi. You're not Lindsay. Cue Michi's look of death. It's pretty bad. Seriously. Why don't you just go hook up with her, then? Well, if I did, she wouldn't put me in situations like this all the time. She would pull some weight in the relationship. I pull my weight? Oh, no, no, no. I comfort you when you're down, tell you how great you are, get things for you, carry your stuff, and hold up your fragile ego. And what do you do for me? The makeout ain't worth it. You don't understand the pressure I'm under. The industry is so... Shut up about the industry. You make an ass of yourself every time you do that. Where are you going? We aren't done here. Yes, Michi. We are. We are done. Did you just break up with me? You can't break up with me. I I won't let you. Michi is shocked. Her phone vibrates. It's Samantha. Did you hear about the mascot? Michi throws her phone out the window. The play is coming together. People are obviously still stressed, but seem to be in better spirits. Michi enters. She sees Scott helping another student carry a set piece. Michi walks toward him. Scott sets down the set piece in its desired location. He and Michi make eye contact. Scott immediately turns and walks toward Lindsay, who is painting another set piece with another student. You ready to rehearse that new scene? Sure. Lindsay hands her brush to the other student and joins Scott. They find a corner and begin rehearsing. Michi watches. Well, all you vampires are the same. Ruthless thugs who won't leave us alone! We have to be ruthless or you rotting meatbags will exterminate us. Michi walks along the edge of the work area, eyeing Lindsay and Scott. What are you talking about? You're the... <laughs> I don't know my line. <laughs> <laughs> Michi gets even angrier. Her eyes catch sight of a rope behind Lindsay. She follows it up to see a heavy sandbag that hangs above Lindsay's head. Cliché, but effective. Michi makes her way toward the rope. Be quiet. I'm not going to fall for your dirty zombie tricks. <coughs> Let me go get you some water. Scott walks away. Lindsay reviews her script. Harker walks by carrying a costume. He notices Michi and watches her. Michi arrives at the rope. She sees that Scott is a little ways away, a full cup of water in one hand, filling another cup with the other. Lindsay is right below the sandbag. Without looking at it, Michi reaches behind her and begins pulling at the knot which secures the rope to the stage. 
Scott finally finishes filling the second cup and walks back toward Lindsay. The sandbag falls. Scott sees. He drops his water and runs toward Lindsay. Look out! Lindsay looks up and sees the sandbag. She moves just in time. The bag hits the ground with a heavy thud, right where she was standing. Scott reaches Lindsay. You okay? Uh, um, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Miss Kelly runs up. How's my star? Are you okay? Did you get hurt? Uh, I'm <laughs> good. I, well, <laughs> fine. Michi, who is far away from the action, sweeping up a mess, rolls her eyes. You think you're going to get away with that? With what? I knew you were petty, but girl, I didn't know you were evil. No one can prove anything. I don't have to. I'll get what's coming to you. Whatever. Harker walks away. Michi continues cleaning. Hey guys, I have an announcement. Mr. Raznotovich stands dramatically in the doorway. He turns to Miss Kelly. That's okay? For sure. Everyone gather around. Well, seems like the cat's already out of the bag, so we won't wait for school to start again to tell you that all school lunches are now half price. Everyone looks at each other. Really? No, <laughs> I'm kidding. They'll still cost you an arm and a leg, but Paradise now has a mascot. Shark car! Shark car! Shark car! And I have another announcement for you all that I think will make you quite happy. They look at each other. I was talking with the mayor of Paradise Valley yesterday. He said, Jeff, I am having a family reunion this weekend, and what we really need is something fun that all 73 of us can do together. And then I remembered this fantastic thespian undertaking that you were all engaged in, and I said, Mr. Mayor... Why don't you have your whole family come out to Paradise High and see an advanced performance of our school play? The students are all wide-eyed. So, surprise! You don't have to wait until next week to go on stage. You're on in two days! <gasps> <gasps> Miss Kelly faints. A student catches her. What? Did I say something bad? Yes, you did, Mr. Raznotovich. And we'll see just how bad later, but... For now, this episode is to be continued. This episode was brought to you by Improv Something. I'm all out of ideas. Oh, uh, all right. This episode was brought to you by Sandbags. Good for vengeance, better for stagehands, and best for holding all your extra sand and water. The nourishing source of all life. On the next episode of Paradise High... That's the sound of Billy systematically disabling all the alien traps he planted throughout the forest. It's also the sound of this narrator's heart breaking. All of that and more in My Role in Paradise, Part 2.